Well, would you believe this is officially Blue Monday? And that, by that, they mean it's the most depressing day of the year. So I can't think of a better gentleman to talk to than somebody who's to do with holidays. And, of course, I'm talking about Paul Nelson from World Travel Market. Paul, a very good morning. Good morning to you. I guess, Paul, first of all, can you tell me, listeners, what is the World Travel Market? Well, World Travel Market is an event that takes place in London every November. And probably the easiest way to describe it is to say that all the conversations that take place over the three days of the event, it leads to £2.5 billion pounds worth of travel industry deals. Wow. And those deals are effectively the packages and the airline routes that we will all travel on the following year to go on holiday. So everything that takes place at World Travel Market in the November has a kind of direct correlation to where we're all going to go on holiday and enjoy ourselves the following year. So it's the airlines, uh, the hotel chains, and I guess the city of people who represent the various cities that we yeah, want to go the, to. Yeah, the international and the regional and the city tourist boards, exactly, all coming together to, to strike those deals to you know put together the packages so that we can all have a nice summer holiday. Paul, what, what did the survey, the recent survey, show about places that we're thinking of going this year, that this year's hotspots, I guess? Yeah, well, we, I mean, we're, we're going to see a real split this summer. So you've got, from the short-haul European perspective, you know, you've had the problems, unfortunately, in countries such as Egypt and yeah. Tunisia and Turkey. So that will see us, uh, as in general, return to those safer countries from a local perspective. So say Spain and Portugal that we're aware of. So we're seeing more capacity going in there. They're going to be busy, very busy this summer. But then that's also led to to a split from a long haul perspective. Oh. So we're seeing an increase in incapacity and in holidays to countries such as China, India, Cuba, Mexico. And then there's a little bit of a curveball as well uh, in Iceland from a more local perspective. Yeah, that's right. I was talking to somebody yesterday, uh, well, a few days last week, and somebody said the, the place to go is Iceland. It's absolutely magic. And I've never thought of it. No, it's it's a funny one. I mean, it's 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 close to us all, but it's probably not one that we thought of that much yeah. until last summer when uh, they beat us at football. And since then, <laughs> no, it's, it's seriously, it's really strange. Since yeah. then, that's led to um, that, yeah, that's led to such an increase in interest in the country from UK holidaymakers. So the industry's picking up on that, and you'll yeah, you'll see uh, more packages and more holidays to Iceland. Uh, the one that doesn't surprise me is Cuba. I mean, that's been closed for so long that it's mm. now, I guess, fully open to tourism, and it's such a great location. That's it, yeah, and it's about kind of getting in as soon as you possibly can so you can yeah. experience that more kind of authentic, old-fashioned uh, Cuban experience as opposed to maybe if you leave it five or ten years and, and you know, obviously the investment from the West, etc., yeah. in America, it will become a lot more uh, westernised and kind of globalised effectively. So, yeah, it's people wanting to get in now to kind of experience what it was like in uh, traditional Cuba. Is there still nice hotels to be found there or are they just a little bit behind the ball on that? Uh, I, th I think it's a mixture over yeah. there. So, so you are seeing some of the more bigger named five star hotels moving in there but you can also go you know to guest houses small more guest houses where again you'll get that more kind of authentic experience as opposed to what it may be in a, in a few years time where it will be all the big five star hotel yeah. brands etc i mean you mentioned china india cuba the long haul all of them yeah. what in this term of slightly strains on the economy, although improving, does that surprise you that we're going to long haul in big numbers? Not really, to be honest, because, I mean, we talk about the economy, that the pound falling compared yeah. to the euro actually means that from a European perspective, we will probably be paying more than what we paid last year to go on holiday, unfortunately. Yeah. And then from a long haul perspective, you're seeing that the uh, airlines and the tour operators are investing a lot more money in the aircraft. So the aircraft to fly long haul are much newer. Yeah. and they're much more comfortable and, and that makes the experience of going long haul a lot better than maybe it was five or, or, or ten years ago and on top of that that also means that you're probably not paying that much more money to fly further afield than what you are for for a short haul uh, wow. European. So yeah. from a you're paying more, obviously, but from a value for money perspective, Depends you may find own. that actually, yeah, it's 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 a bit better for some of these more long haul destinations. I was surprised in in, in the places that you left Australia. I thought that was ever popular with certainly Europeans. 
Oh, it is definitely. I mean, uh, but that's it will be happening very much now. I guess yeah. now's their now's yeah. their summer, and yeah, that that will still be popular. But it's not necessarily rising. The percentages that say China, India, yeah. Iceland, and, and Cuba are they're much more uh, newer destinations, so newer from an interest perspective as far as UK is concerned. Are we seeing an increase in in holidays where you are managed, where there's somebody with you? Like if you're going to China, there's somebody with you all the time, so they guide you, direct you, and look after you. I think yeah, yeah. A lot of those holidays will be done via tour operators, so yeah. you've got that support network that the tour operator does offer you. Obviously, you know you're going such a long way and you're yeah. going to such a different culture. You are going to want that 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 support that that a tour operator gives you. So fewer people will be doing it as you say dynamically packaging as we call it in the industry. So yeah. the holiday maker putting the holiday together themselves and and effectively you know going out there on their own without that support that the tour operator offers. Is the, the this the rise and surge of all inclusive? Is that still happening? Very much so, you know, and that you know fits very much into to what to what we were talking about as far yeah. as the, the pound and the Brexit exec, example. That means that you know money isn't going to go as far. So the tour operators are very much putting on all inclusive because you know we want to make sure that we're able to manage our money when we're out there, and it just increases the uh, the likelihood of us booking, and particularly us booking early. You know, from a January perspective, we book now because we know we're able to manage the cost, and we yeah. know we're not going to have to spend more money in resort than we necessarily want to. I mean, all inclusive started at the lower end of the market. Have the five star boys and six star boys got into the all inclusive now? Yeah, very much so. I mean, that might have been the case, say, pre the recession. But yeah. since we had the, the recession and the financial downturn, a lot of the holidays for all levels included, you know, that all inclusive element. Because, you know, obviously we were all worried about money. We all wanted to go away, but you want to be able to manage the cost a lot more. So, yeah, you'll see, you know, all inclusive holidays at the very top level and also kind of at that more kind of a bargain bucket basement level as well so yeah very much so so it's, it's all, all there at all levels i mean the, the travel industry the holiday industry has had a rough few years really in terms because of the economic downturn they always like uh, seem the first to suffer for that are they on the way back is, is is it looking good for them i'm not i'm not necessarily sure if that's the case to be yeah. honest so the one good thing about holidays is that you, know, you look at the weather today. So I, you know, I came into the studio this morning, got absolutely soaked. You know, was on yeah. a packed, horrible <laughs> train. You know, it was a proper Blue Monday experience. And we all want to go away. And yeah. there was a quote from one of the top um, CEOs in the in the travel industry uh, earlier last week, in which he said, you know, you'll you'll put off the purchase, say, of a, a new suit, or you can put off the purchase of a new telly or a new carpet. What you won't do is put off the purchase of, of a holiday. And that doesn't mean you're going to spend crazy money on a holiday you know you're going to want to get a good deal you're going to have to get one within your budget but the likelihood is that most people will take one so it's up to the industry and the industry's done very well in this yeah. in producing the right packages going to the right destinations to make sure that holiday makers have the right choice so the industry hasn't hasn't done too bad you know yeah. the, the, the numbers are increasing um the margins from a tour operator perspective are very narrow without yeah, question yeah. it's one of the smallest yeah. uh, out of all industries it it's is. uh you know it's, it's, it's really uh, single digit numbers so they're working very hard to you know to get us to go on holiday but you know as I say when you have a, a kind of a commute in this morning like I had you, you definitely do want a holiday I think one of the big advantages of holiday is if you book it six or nine months before you're going, you get that benefit of looking forward to it. It's almost like an I'm exotic and it becomes a talking point. And on blue Mondays, the deep depressing days, that's what you think about your holidays. And I think that's the strength of it. That's it. That's very much so. That's why uh, today and the weekend were you know very key days as far as the industry is concerned. Because, yeah, yeah it's, it's central, isn't it? It's one thing to say, oh, yes, I'm going to go on holiday and then you book it last minute. But you're right. You don't yeah. get that level of uh, enjoyment about being able to share it uh, dinner party currency as I call it as to kind of you know yeah. where you're going and being able to talk about it and make everyone jealous about where you're yeah. off to Paul, uh, Paul it, it is the days of people booking online direct with organisations is that on the way in? and the actual big operators uh, who are taking over where they're giving that reassurance you, you know that protective but your money's protected you are protected is that the way forward well, you're seeing uh, from a protection perspective, I mean, there's, there are some 
rather large failures last year. So, yeah. so people are aware of you know making sure they book through ABTA and Atoll yeah. bonded organisations. Now you can do that both online and you can do that on the high street as well. Yeah. So I think you're seeing from that short haul perspective as far as going to Spain and Portugal and those destinations that you're comfortable with, you're probably seeing most of that now moving online because people know the destinations, they're comfortable going there. They may well be going to the same hotel that they've been to a few times. Yeah. So you don't need that support. But then along at the same time, you know, when we're talking about going long haul and we're talking about China and India, Mexico, Cuba, they're destinations that, you know, you, you want that support and you probably want that reassurance of talking to someone. And that's where the, the you know, the high street travel agent or the, the kind of the call center travel agent is really, uh, you know, really gaining ground and, and, and earning their money because there's a holiday maker going, you know, traveling a long way to a, a culture that you're not aware of. You want to talk to someone who's been there before. You want to talk to someone who knows a little bit more than what you do. So it all depends really on, on, on where you're traveling. But from a protection perspective, wherever you're traveling, I think very much so that the consumer, the holiday maker, is now aware of being able to book for an atoll and an, an ABTA bonded yeah. uh, holiday company. Paul, it's been lovely to talk to you. I wish you all the very best. I hope t- you've got your holiday boots as well, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I'm finished, yep, I will get that one done. <laughs> Thanks very much for your time, Paul. Thank you.